what's up everybody welcome back to exotic astrology again and today we will discuss in summary about the horoscope of march and there are some important events here because retrogression has started again as i said in my february horoscope video that february was a great month <laughs> and march has started with some retrogression from 9th march where jupiter turns retrograde and even mercury also eventually turns retrograde on 23rd near about okay there you go so now let's see how the energies are starting and how is it progressing and how is it ending during the month of march and if you are new to the channel then please subscribe and if you want a consultation then approach me in my website below and if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with others and if you want me to make any other video then also let me know and before i begin as i say god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him so now i have noted down the placements and events and the conjunctions which are happening and accordingly i will switch my screen and have a look because there are so many changes all right there you go so let's see how the month is starting so i see here that sun is in aquarius in shatavisha nakshatra in first of march and then moon is in leo in purva falguni and then there is this full moon about which i'll speak now and then mars is in scorpio in 26 degrees in jeshtha nakshatra and mercury is in 27 degrees of aquarius in purva bhadra nakshatra jupiter is in 29 degrees of libra in the nakshatra of vishakha <laughs> 29 degrees almost then venus is in 29 degrees in purva bhadra nakshatra yes it is still in the sign of aquarius and saturn is in the sign of sagittarius as we all know in 13 degrees in the fourth pada of mula nakshatra and rahu is in 19 degrees of cancer in the nakshatra of ashlesha first pada it has reached quite a bit and then ketu is also in 19 degrees of capricorn in the third pada of shravan nakshatra all right so this is how the month begins so basically jupiter is in libra mars is in scorpio saturn is in sagittarius ketu is in capricorn then there are three planets in aquarius sun mercury venus and then there is rahu which is in cancer and moon is in leo so this is how the month is beginning all right so now what is happening is on first i see that there is this full moon which is happening yes because sun is in aquarius and moon is in leo so near about the evening time or the afternoon depending on where you stay there's this full moon which is happening in the nakshatra of purva falguni yes so this means whatever resolutions we took when there was this eclipse the solar eclipse which is what basically in february the starting of sun and moon from the same sign yes that's what was the new moon and that's known as the solar eclipse because ketu was very near to it yes so then whatever started in the zone of aquarius now we will see how to what extent has it given fulfillment in the sign of leo now what's happening is basically the three planets sun mercury and venus they are in the sign of aquarius yes and that means these three planets show where the liveliness is there in the transit because jupiter saturn rahu and ketu they will be there for long time okay so they show transitions which occur over a period of time but these three planets sun mercury venus they are bit uh, very fast moving planets yes but moon is too fast <laughs> so we cannot take moon into consideration for daily predictions but uh sun mercury venus they will uh, tell us uh, where for the month the energies are getting focused apart from the uh, planets jupiter saturn and rahu ketu yes and mars is also changing sign in between as i see so uh, therefore it's important to understand this uh, mars also in this transit because it is going to be conjunct with saturn so that's a bit difficult combination so now that means sun mercury venus is in aquarius which means there's a lot of aquarian energy in the beginning of the month so you will feel that people are being becoming very social people are becoming very much uh, unorthodox people are wanting to talk and discuss about new things about ideas about changing the society it's basically a very uh, fun month basically yes fun in the sense not uh, a wrong kind of a fun that you are just partying and hanging out and you are just wasting time it's not that kind of a fun it it represents activities and actions which will happen that will 
set the course for the next month because uh, they will be in the sign of Aquarius and this will lead to a lot of discussions you will see a uh, lot of media uh, up, uprisals you will see where they are talking about changing the society about bringing down old issues which are there hidden from the past hidden doesn't mean hidden in the near future uh, in the near past or 100 years back but in general those issues which have not been sorted or solved people will be focusing too much about those issues yes and there will be a very unorthodox approach because Aquarius is co-ruled by Rahu here. That is why people will meet each other and then talk and discuss and they will try to understand each other's viewpoint and then they will try to implement because remember Aquarius is not only an air sign, it is a fixed sign also, okay? So they will try that this thing which they have discussed gets into paper and now the month is starting with the full moon in Leo in Purva Falguni Nakshatra. Yes, so what Purva Falguni is? Purva Falguni is a nakshatra which you know, deals very strongly with contracts and negotiations and bringing things together, bringing people together. All right. So this is a very beautiful month for uh, this full moon to begin in with Purva Falguni. So it is there. Aquarius is there, and then in Leo the full moon is there. So whatever effects the solar eclipse had given in february now we will see that whether the results of that are coming into completion because new moon starts and full moon brings it into completion yes and because of purva falguni and the dynamics of aquarius purva falguni is in leo so there can be some things related to government or our own uh, stance of security because leo shows what we keep as our security right because it is the place of the king and king is very secure so we have to see now that what whichever houses this uh, leo aquarius is falling in yes so for example if you are aries ascendant then this is happening in your 11th house and in your fifth house yes so you may find that some gains which had you would have thought that uh, you might have got so now we will see when this new moon is there did you get it or not yes so that is how you have to see which houses these are happening and it, there can be a lot of socializing and gathering of people coming together discussing of things because of Purva Falguni Nakshatra yes so that is how the month is beginning and Jupiter is in Libra in the Nakshatra of Vishakha so it it's happening throughout uh, that uh, we are trying to balance our skills on Two, two sides because Vishakha represents something which splits yes so this means that we may be uh, taking into some spiritual path but due to some reason we may uh, have doubt that should we go here or should we go there so that Vishakha dynamics is happening and depending on which of our houses Jupiter is ruling in your chart so for example if you are Leo, Leo ascendant then Jupiter rules the fifth house and the eighth house yes so in this case, there can be something is related to mantras. Yes, because fifth house deals with mantras, chanting new mantras, and eighth house can deal with uh, deal with some kind of a transformation or something related to the money of others. Yes, so those things can um, you may be confused regarding those things. That, okay, should I go here or should I go there? Yes, so that confusion can be there. But at the same time, this uh, Jupiter's placement in Vishakha is good for certain other reasons that. We try to see both the sides of the coin and then we try to analyze and philosophically try to understand and we try to move ahead in this direction. So for that, it is good that we see both the pros and cons and then we uh, decide finally where we want to go. Yes. So this is uh, the advantage of Jupiter in Vishakha and Saturn is still in Sagittarius. That is why whatever karma we are wanting to do now for the next two years till to 2020 January I think till when Saturn is in Sagittarius we are becoming very sure that we are not only just hovering around the surface we are digging our roots very deep we are planting seeds below the ground because it's in the nakshatra of Mula that represents the grass roots yes that means it is very recommended for us whichever house has Saturn rules in our chart so for example if you are Taurus ascendant then Saturn rules the ninth house and the tenth house so anything pertaining to higher authorities or higher philosophy higher wisdom those things it is important that we not just do just for the sake of doing but we plant our seeds properly yes so if you are a Leo ascendant it rules the sixth and the seventh house so this is how you understand how the uh, transits will behave so you have to check 
which houses these planets are ruling in your chart okay and then accordingly you will see the results so now what is happening mars is still in the sign of scorpio in the beginning till um, 7th okay so i'll speak on mars so mars is in scorpio when the month is beginning so basically mars is very strong in scorpio but the predicament with mars in scorpio is that mars is a fiery planet and scorpio is a water sign yes and it's the sign of transformation so it can happen that when we take uh, initiatives related to mars which itself represents initiatives yes because mars is the planet of initiative so in that case uh, our initiatives uh, can give us some kind of a struggle internally externally we may be able to do it but internally it can give us some kind of a struggle because scorpio is a very transformative sign yes and it's ruled by pluto and it's also ruled by ketu so that means that when the month is beginning we have to be very cautious that whatever we do in the outer world we do not take that very much internally we do not try to uh, delineate ourselves from what we are or who we are internally and how is it happening externally yes? so suppose you have hit the gym but you're not losing weight so mars and scorpio going to be become very aggressive very emotional yes why am i not losing those pounds i will lose those 30 kilos or maybe i will lose those last two kilos <laughs> but we may not be able to achieve it or we may be able to achieve it so if we can't achieve it then we have to be very cautious that we don't over uh, emphasize the weakness which is there on external level yes so that's the caution that we need to take and then on 2nd march venus enters the sign of exaltation in pisces and venus as we know is the planet of love romance comfort it is also the planet of spirituality because venus is the dev guru yes so ultimately why i said spirituality because it goes to the sign of pisces because that is the place where it finds comfort yes so venus in pisces shows the highest level of spirituality that we are finding happiness in spirituality so that means Uh, as the month of march starts it is very important that we start doing uh, new spiritual practices if we are not doing yes because this is a very powerful time we will be very happily uh, we will be very happily diving deep into those things which we would have not liked to do earlier so aquarius is about talks discussions and then pisces is a higher form of aquarius where we go from a mundane humanitarian social level to the highest sign of uh, god yes because that's the last sign that's the sign of moksha actually so venus is Pi- venus in pisces will represent spirituality so that's this is a very good time for love romance relationships understanding people giving people their due not trying to force ourselves on others okay and then on third mercury also enters pisces now mercury is in its sign of debilitation but the beauty is there's something called as nij bhanga raj yoga which is happening here which means when the when a planet is in the sign of debilitation but the ruler of that sign is sitting in that house itself so now here or if the planet which gets exalted in that sign is also sitting there okay so now in this case in pisces venus gets exalted so mercury gets debilitated so now the sign the exaltation planet for that sign venus is also there with mercury so this is canceling the debility of mercury right away now mercury in pisces can simply mean that we can be a bit too much on the higher source rather than doing things ourselves yes so that is why mercury is not very good in pisces because these people can sometimes they may claim that oh anyways god will do whatever he wants we don't have to do like that. no no that's not the right way actually because we also have to do our part god will definitely do but we also have to do yes so now when venus is also there with mercury so this shows that we can overcome the difficulties which mercury is uh, facing in pisces because of this nij bhanga yes and depending on which of our house this is falling that will vary so for example if you are a pisces ascendant itself then this will happen in your luck night itself so then it may happen that you might have to take into consideration a lot of thinking and thought process and then you have to decide which route to take yes so then what happens on 7th mars will enter the sign of sagittarius where it is conjunct with saturn although it's not a very strong conjunction in the beginning but gradually as mars is moving forward to sagittarius is getting bit intense so we have to know that now 
the conjunctions of Mars and Saturn is happening here. Okay, so that means whichever house this is there, the sign of Sagittarius, we need to be very careful. So if you are a Leo ascendant, then this is happening in your fifth house. So that means we need to ensure that we do not take any rash decisions or we do not get too much into quarreling or we do not get too much obsessed about that house because Mars represents the accelerator, Saturn represents the brakes. So it can happen that when two extremely opposite contrary energies are there, it may happen that we may have this paralysis or should I do this or should I not do this or it can happen that we are doing too much but we don't see results because Saturn is a slow moving planet, it takes long time. And now here what happens is, because Saturn is not a great friend of Jupiter, it is kind of neutral, but Mars is a great friend of Jupiter, so Mars is much more powerful in Sagittarius than Saturn is in Sagittarius. So now Martian traits will dominate. So now what will happen is, we will be more prone to taking actions rather than wanting to do it in a long term basis. So we can become a bit impulsive and this can, this can create some rifts, especially in matters of our beliefs, our faiths, our higher ideals because Sagittarius represents those things, yes. So that means we need to be very cautious that we do not impose our beliefs, our belief systems on others because that's going to harm the scenario because then they are also having this so they will also try to impart this to us, yes. And it depends on which house Sagittarius is, accordingly this will flow. So for example, if you are a um, Libra ascendant then what will happen is because this is happening in your third house so you may be very aggressive in communicating your beliefs to somebody because third house is the house of communication so you need to be careful in that regard yes or there can be some difficulties in quarrel uh, sorry for uh, traveling I mean so there can be some challenges you may go and you may find that oh what I expected was not there here so keep your mind calm don't get obsessed okay then what is happening uh, Sun is entering Pisces on 14th and then Sun will again be conjunct Venus and uh, finally as we know from 19th February Venus is out of the combustion so now it is quite a good time for Venus. Now what is happening Sun is entering Pisces and it will stay till the end of the month yes we all know that Sun will stay for one month so that means now the entire force of the universe which is the sun that will transform from Aquarius to Pisces so Pisces is the sign of philosophy it is the sign of higher beliefs and it's like the uh, very it's like the last sign where you decide to leave things and then you wait till what happens yes so that's why it is known as the sign of moksha the 12th house originally so then you will see people will start relaxing yes <laughs> because people will feel that oh Whatever happens, let it happen of its own accord. But that doesn't mean they will not do anything. Uh, but they can have this tendency that we become a bit lazy and then let things take its own accord and let let uh, things fall into place automatically. Let's not try to fit in somewhere. Yes. So those things will be the hallmark. And then there is this new moon in Pisces in 17th in the Nakshatra of Purva Bhadra. So this can create some... Uh, anger in the minds okay because Pura Bhadra has a lot of fiery energy which is very good if they do tell it in the Kundalini awakening process but sometimes they may not do so but if they use this in spirituality and then this will be very good because that Nakshatra has a lot of power a lot of potential for spirituality so after this new moon and because Pisces is also ruled by Jupiter right so after this new moon it is highly recommended that we start some new spiritual practices and we do it with faith even if it may yield results or it may not yield results yes so it is important that we have the element of faith when we are going ahead with the sign of pisces because it is ruled by jupiter so jupiter says first you have faith then you execute okay <laughs> but virgo says no 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 first you see results and then you execute yes so that's the difference between pisces and virgo and then uh, all these three will be there till uh, till the end of the month almost in the sign of Pisces so you will see a lot of Piscean energy which will be reverberating throughout the month especially after 14th when Surya also enters Pisces and then um, on 23rd March Mercury is becoming retrograde and it will become direct on April 15th progressive so 
23rd March, Mercury is turning retrograde again. Yes, so this means that it can happen that certain friends from your past can come back. And certain things that you want to do, but now you may get confused how to do this because Mercury is in Pisces ultimately. Although even though Venus is there, but still it is itself in Pisces. So you may f feel that, oh, some decisions I wanted to invest here, but I don't know what to do. So where should I invest? Where should I not invest? Okay. So it is very important that when Mercury is retrograde, especially in the sign of debilitation, then we do proper meditation and then we try to channelize our thoughts and plan things properly because when mercury is in pisces we have a tendency to say whatever happens will happen i will not do any planning so no that's not good because they say if you are failing to plan then you are planning to fail yes so that means when uh, mercury goes retrograde those things can become much more intense and things decisions from our past can come back yes so we need to take care that we note down things properly and we have a checklist and then we go on tick, ticking whatever we have done yes and then this is how we can tackle this mercury's retrogression in the sign of pisces and then on 26th venus will enter the sign of uh, aries in the next zodiac sign and then finally we will have sun mercury in the sign of pisces and venus will enter aries so then when venus enters aries you will see a lot of passion in matters of Ven venus yes people will want to date each other people will want to go out hang out have fun enjoy do this do that because aries is the sign which is ruled by mars so there's this fiery energy which will come yes so that's it from my side and jupiter also is becoming retrograde on 9th march yes and it will get progressive after july 10th 2018 so it's getting retrograde for a long time as we know jupiter and saturn they get retrograde for a long time so <coughs> now what is happening jupiter is also becoming retrograde. so whichever houses jupiter is ruling in your chart so for uh, example if you are a sagittarius ascendant then jupiter rules the first and the fourth house yes so some prominent things related to your health or matters of education those things you may want to pursue more seriously yes because retrogression means the Chestable is very high. It's very strong. Strong means it's very prominent. It's like something which you cannot avoid. Yes. So, if you are Sagittarius rising, then for you, uh, this retrogression is happening in the 11th house. Yes. Fourth Lord and the Lagna Lord because for Sagittarius Libra is in the 11th house and Jupiter is retrograde in Libra. Yes. So, that means we uh, will be paying more attention to our higher philosophical thought process, higher beliefs, higher belief systems. And we will also want to connect to our gurus. It can happen that we, some guru comes back again. Yes. So for me especially it's happening. Because during that time I am meeting one of my gurus after March 9th. So that can that's happening for me at least in some way. So it can happen for others also. And as I said uh, it will depend which house of Jupiter is also ruling in the chart. So it will be retrograde in Vishaka. So it can happen that you decided something on one side which is a vishaka and then later on you decide oh this is not working then i have to go on the other side so we have to have this flexibility that we can maybe parallelly do something or we choose either of the way so be ready for some kind of shift which we might have to do pertaining to our spiritual beliefs and especially pertaining to things which jupiter represents in the chart which means whichever houses jupiter is ruling in the chart yes so that is it from my side so finally the month is ending with sun in Revdi nakshatra in the sign of pisces and moon is in virgo in hasta nakshatra and mars is in sagittarius in purvashata and mercury is in Revdi in 18 degrees and then jupiter is in 28 degrees it has moved back <laughs> to uh, to vishakha third pada and then venus is in six degrees of aries and saturn is in 14 degrees so see, so now you see the conjunction of saturn and mars as the month is progressing is becoming more and more and more intense so wherever this conjunction is happening we need to take care that we don't uh, over emphasize those things of that house because saturn mars creates this illusion yes yes, yes you got to do this if you don't do this now everything will be over so hang on calm down and then rahu is in 18 degrees of cancer ashlesha and ketu is in 18 degrees of sravan yes so now uh, what's happening at the end is mercury and saturn uh, sorry sun and mercury are getting the aspect of 
Saturn, uh, Mars and Rahu because Mars is in Sag from there with its fourth aspect it is aspecting and Rahu from Cancer with its ninth aspect is aspecting yes so when Mercury and Sun are in the sign of Pisces we can have this challenge sometimes that oh things are not appearing to be the way we want them to appear yes and now then Mars will say no 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 you have to make it happen but Pisces says no no don't do anything let everything happen so that paradox can be there and that paralysis or I would say uh, paralysis by analysis can happen so for this month it is very much recommended that we uh, intensify our spiritual sadhana our spiritual practices our inner belief systems because jupiter is also going retrograde retrogression is in a way a good time to reflect back on our spiritual practices and if you are a libra ascendant or a capricorn ascendant then mercury which is your ninth lord that is also going retrograde okay so for these two ascendants it is a very good time to check on our spiritual progress and if there are things which are holding us back, then we can improve on it. Okay. So that is it from my side. This is how it ends. All right. So see you the next time with another month of April when sun will move to its sign of exaltation. Okay. Wish you good luck. I hope you will do the proper meditation and then take care about the things which I have said. Okay. Bye bye. See you.